I am attorney Marie Chris Batan Lasco. This is my virtual classroom. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this channel, I shall aim to simplify the law. I will discuss concepts and principles of law in under 10 minutes. Hi again, everyone. For this video, I want us to talk more about the articles of incorporation. In my other video, we have basically talked about what should be the contents of your articles of incorporation. For this video, I want to talk about whether we can still make changes on the articles of incorporation. Now, you have to remember that your Articles of Incorporation is basically the contract between the corporation and the state. Having said that, if you do make any changes or amendments to the Articles of Incorporation, you have to ask permission from the state. How do you do that? You have to apply for an amendment of the Articles of Incorporation before your Securities and Exchange Commission. Also, your Articles of Incorporation would also represent a contract between the corporation and the stockholders and also among the stockholders themselves. So, if there are any changes to that contract, you will also have to ask permission from the stockholders. And that is why a vote is required to be called upon if the corporation decides to amend its articles of incorporation. That is provided for under Section 15 of the Revised Corporation Code. So what does Article 15 tell you? Article 15 tells you that should the corporation would want to amend the Articles of Incorporation, they have to call upon it for voting to determine whether the stockholders are amenable to change the Articles of Incorporation or to amend some matters in the Articles of Incorporation. It must be approved by the vote of the majority of the Board of Directors and the vote or written assent of stockholders representing at least two-thirds of the capital stock if it is a stock corporation. If it is a non-stock corporation, then there must also still be a vote. And it must be approved by the vote or written assent of the majority of the Board of Trustees and the the members representing two-thirds. So as I've mentioned earlier, since your Articles of Incorporation basically serves as a contract between the corporation and the stockholders, then it is necessary that if there is any change or amendment on the Articles of Incorporation, then you have to get the consent of the stockholders or the members. And that was the required vote that must be needed to amend the Articles of Incorporation. We also said earlier on that your Articles of Incorporation is also a contract between the corporation and the state. And for that reason, you have to also file your application for amendment of the Articles of Incorporation to your Securities and Exchange Commission. So the corporation cannot just on its own amend the Articles of Incorporation just because they already have the required, the required vote as provided for under Section 15. This has to be approved by your Securities and Exchange Commission. So earlier we said that the required vote is the majority of the Board of Directors or the vote or written assent of the majority of the board of trustees for stock for non-stock corporations. And for the stockholders and members, it would be the vote or written assent of uh, stockholders representing at least two-thirds of the capital stock if stock corporations and at least two-thirds of the members for non-stock corporations. Now that is the required vote. So it would happen but there are some stockholders or members or board of directors that would not be amenable to the amendment of the Articles of Incorporation. What will happen to them if the required vote was actually achieved? But there are really, uh, there, there are really a minority 
some stockholders or members that are uh, that are not amenable to the amendment of the Articles of Incorporation. What will happen to them? Your Section 15 also tells you that dissenting stockholders, meaning those stockholders who voted against the amendment of the Articles of Incorporation, can have their appraisal right. What is an appraisal right? This is a right on, uh, this is a right that may be exercised by the dissenting stockholders where they can demand for the payment, for the full payment of the value of their shares. So they will sell their shares to the corporation because they are no longer amenable to the amendment of the Articles of Incorporation. That is what is meant by appraisal right. And that is what you find in Section 15 of your Revised Corporation Code. Now we said that we have to ask permission from the state through the Securities and Exchange Commission if the corporation would want to amend the Articles of Incorporation. So what do you submit to the Securities and Exchange Commission? The corporation will have to send the original and the amended provisions in the Articles of Incorporation. And they must indicate by underscoring or underlining the amendment so that it's easy for the Securities and Exchange Commission to identify the amendments. Now, the amended Articles of Incorporation should be duly certified under oath by the corporate secretary and also accompanied by a director's or trustee certificate stating that the vote was actually called upon and the vote required under Section 15 was obtained. Again, what vote is that? That is but uh, a vote of the majority of the members of the board of directors and the vote or written assent of the stockholders representing at least two-thirds of the capital stock for stock corporations and a majority vote or written assent of the board of trustees and vote or written assent of at least two-thirds of the members for non-stock corporations. So they must indicate that under oath when they submit the amended articles of incorporation. So once you have filed your amendment of articles of incorporation and everything that is required as what I have mentioned earlier on, when will the amendment take effect? Your section 15 will also tell you that the amendment will take effect only upon approval of such amended, amendment rather by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Because as we said earlier on, your Articles of Incorporation is also the contract of the corporation and the state. So your amendments cannot, cannot take effect yet if there is no approval yet by the state through your Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, supposing you have already filed your amendment of Articles of Incorporation and it has been six months from the time that you have filed it and still there was, there, there was still no action from the SEC, there, there is still no approval. Your Section 15 says that if there is still inaction from the Securities and Exchange Commission and six months have already passed, then your amendments will now be considered as effective unless of course if the delay of such approval was caused by the corporation but if there are no grounds to attribute to the corporation for the delay then your section 15 tells you that your amendment will be effective six months from the filing of such amendment to your Securities and Exchange Commission and if there was still no action yet on the part of the Securities and Exchange Commission. So we said then that as a general rule, you can actually make amendments to the Articles of Incorporation. Now, are there matters that may not be subject to an amendment? 
matters that the corporation cannot amend in the Articles of Incorporation? Yes, there are actually matters that cannot be amended. You cannot amend the name of the incorporators. Why? Because that's already an established fact. They were actually the ones who incorporated. You cannot amend the first directors. You cannot amend the, the officers or the treasurers elected and already written or stated in the Articles of Incorporation unless, of course, to correct mistakes like um, typographical errors. All other matters, however, may be amended, like the capital stock, like the, the corporate term, or the corporate name, or the primary purpose or secondary purpose of the corporation. So all matters may be amended except those that I have mentioned earlier on, the incorporators, names of the incorporators, the names of the subscribers, the names of the, the initial directors, the names of the witnesses. Because they, it, that's already an established fact that they were actually the ones who incorporated for the, uh, in the matter of the name of incorporators. They were actually the ones who executed your articles of incorporation. So that's it for this video. I hope you now understand the principles um, actually under Section 15 of your Revised Corporation Code. I hope that you have learned something from this video and I will see you in the next. So if you find this video helpful, please click like, subscribe, and that notification bell so that you will be notified of new video uploads. Thank you for watching. See you next time in MBL Classroom.